Hi, good day. Uh, it's nice to be here again in Fireside with Madhavan and with me is Jatin Singh. Uh, he's only 42 years old, but you could call him India's weatherman. Well, the other weatherman for sure, because uh, the main guys are out there in the government, the Indian Meteorological Department, but SkyMet has been a wonderful alternative competitor, whatever you want to call it, and doing very interesting things that sometimes help the government and sometimes mildly challenge the government. So we will get cracking. And this is not just about weather. It's about what data on various kinds of weather, climate, or the country can do for you, for the business, for technology, and of course, agriculture. Welcome, Jatin. Welcome to Fireside. Let's go back to where it started. First of all, SkyMet's a lovely name. Uh, who thought of it? How did uh, you get no, it? <laughs> I, I, I had nothing to do with it, actually. Uh, my father had created this company on paper. My father is it's in a similar line of work, and he's been doing this since 19, like the mid-1990s. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had created this company in paper. Uh, it was a proprietorship because he wanted to do some external business. I had just come back from the US and it, due to pure happenstance, I was able to get some work from Sahara somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to transact that business in this company. So I kind of, it's completely by chance. I do not, I have nothing to do with the naming of this company. But it so fits in so beautifully with the work yes, it's I, Then the credit should go to my father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what was the original company supposed to do? Some trading, some oh. Russian equipment was to come in and some import export. It was all written perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, how did it began from your side and how has it grown over the years? Let's have a quick uh, recap, as they say. Um, I started out, basically, I came back from the US. Uh, this was after 9-11. Uh, I was working in A&I for a while. I'm a journalist by training. I have no scientific training. I have a bachelor's in political science and a master's in international communications and international relations. Uh, I got, and 2000, in, in, in about 2002 was a time when the economy truly started booming, if you, if people remember, uh, there was this campaign about shining India, mm -hmm. uh, Atul Bihari Bajpayee's time, and and I haven't seen, frankly, the economy grow like that ever again. Uh, uh, besides, that's besides the point. But a lot of television networks had come up at that point of time. NDTV 24/7 is around that time. You had uh, Sahara Samay, you had uh, Aaj Tak, and Headlines Today, for instance had come up at that point of time, which is today India Today TV. And so television networks had money, the investors were there, and people are trying to work out content, what content works, what content does not work. And there was, to a great extent, still is not, but there was nothing for weather. We had no expectations from it. I remember in A&I, whenever weather data was required, a runner had to go to IMD and get a sacro style sheet of paper. It is only in about that time that IMD actually started publishing weather data on the website. When the IMD went online, things, I think for this country actually started changing. And my first business plan was, how do I repackage weather data in good graphics and make it more appealing to people? That is how I initially started. So my first client was Sahara Sameh. And my second client was actually the Hindustan Times, February 4th, 2004, I think when I started publishing. And then I grew from newspaper to paper. Uh, I went to, in 2005, started working for Hindu, uh, which still is a client, then Jagran. Uh, and, uh, and and kept kept on growing. So that's how that the, the the genesis of the company is basically creating data for media. So yeah, so it's uh, that is very much in line with your journalistic yes, beginning. Yes, but yes. but later, as like any uh, an entrepreneur, I think is a perpetually insecure creature. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good quote. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the weather data that was being used in India was ornamental. You know, it would get bumped off the new cycle. You'll get small corner here and there. It was not fundamental to their business. Ashta can not run a single weather bulletin today all year and nobody would even notice. So I had to find the application, the true applications for weather data. And I, did, and I kind of did my research and I found two businesses. One was due to the Central Electricity Act of 2003, which I think was redone again in 2014 now. The, the onset of power trading, you know, the, and so power was the first one that I found. With, and at that point of time, the uh, Delhi and uh, Bombay utilities had been sold. So the North Delhi power utilities actually were Tata Power. Mm -hmm. And that's when I went first and said, you know, you might need other data. And they said, yes, we do. 
and then I reached out to uh, BSCS. Um, what is it called? Uh, the Bombay Utility. Yeah, BSCS. Yeah. Yeah, and there I got traction. So I was able to sell to both. So from from media, I started selling to energy. So from dissemination of information to let's say real consumption. Real consumption, data. mathematics, statistics, data. So call it. I mean, these things are new, sexy terms, but they have been there for all. The what what kind of completely changed the axis of my life was agriculture that I came to, to very late to actually. I, for a business that I started in 2003, my first agri business was actually 2008 when I started working with Nokia Life Tools. Uh, SkyMet at least grabbed my attention when it became the some sort of an alternative as a monsoon forecaster. Yeah. Uh, although you're doing a lot of things, your images of the guys who took on the IMD, the, Inter uh, mm -hmm. the Indian Meteorological Department, and I think you got three forecasts right this year, uh, this decade, and you got one wrong. And I think there was somebody who was uh, cribbing about or about one getting wrong. But so I think it's good to get the weather, uh, the monsoon part clear because it's very mm -hmm. nice to be Indian and discuss the monsoon or as a more scientific way of uh, understanding the economy. Now, how different are you? from the government agency in, uh, let's say, dealing with the monsoon. I mean, let's talk a bit about your monsoon My forecast. My monsoon forecast is apolitical. That's the first part. Okay, that we know, but okay. sort of, please. Um, the second thing is, I think it was, you see, the IMD and the Indian Scientific Establishment is a very good one, is a very efficient one. I think we don't have a machine in India that takes the science and converts it into bigger things. The Indian Geological Department is older than this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, it... And they have been working on monsoons since at least 1921. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman who died about two years ago, who was uh, known as the father of uh, Indian uh, modern Indian meteorology. And there's, I've actually made a documentary for him, D.R. Sikka. Mm -hmm. And he came up with a paper in 1980, which basically said that the Indian ISMR, Indian summer monsoon, has a very good correlation with the ENSO. That is the Pacific El Nino. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. In an El Nino year, if you if you just do a pure statistical correlation, you would get 80. Uh, so there is zero chance of excess rainfall in an El Nino year. Mm -hmm. There's a 80 percent chance of a below normal, and there's a 60 percent chance of drought. It is that straightforward. Yeah, this it, has been part of the folklore now, anyway. Yeah, but that was not known or talked about before 2012, before we came in. Where is your bread and butter coming from? It's not uh, still the media. No, my bread and butter. I am a partner of the government of India. Basically, state governments and central government. Oh, to, because it's the the biggest user of data in this country is the government of India because they need it for food security, for inflation, for disaster management, and the infrastructure that the, the taxpayer has been trying to build. I'm a little confused here, yes. Jatin. You have to explain. See, you have uh, the government with its own data gathering machinery in every district. So, how does a 15-year-old startup come into the picture? as a supplier of information as opposed to a consumer of information from the government in this? We are both, but now we have, I think our data gathering capacity is now equal or probably more than the IMD with just the large number of stations that we have. I think there is an acceptance over the last decade that is agnostic of the government that the government is not a great service provider. The government is a good decision maker. So you have, so and that has broken into two kinds of ways. So one, we are a federated system. So states can make up their own mind. If they're not happy with the central system, they can go and get their own network. Let's get this right. What kind of data are we talking about? Hydrometeorological data, agricultural data, soil uh, data, land record data. Now so I'm in all kinds of things now. Production data, market price, the whole works. You get it. You got your finger into all this. Yes, it's each not and every part. Okay. No, no, no. We are into. So I'm basically a, a large agri stack data collector for uh, uh, forecast, actuals, and I have a good long series. That ties in very well with your mission statement. I found it pretty impressive. You know, in your our mission is to collect atmospheric and terrestrial data and weaponize it for our customers. That sounds very sexy. So, uh, <laughs> but how do you do it? I mean, you give us some example of, let's say, the banks using it for this. But here is where we need to focus a bit. You, you see yourself as a technology company or an information company or both, and how do you blend this? Let's give a, an idea into. It's one thing to say we're covering it all, but yeah. the other thing to say how do you actually do it? I see myself as a company that collects data 
for Indian agriculture that enables financial tools like insurance and credit. I'm very focused on that. Jatin, you have to explain the logistics of it. You know, this is a country of 3.2 million square kilometer, 1.25 billion people, 125 crores. How does a startup like yours? I mean, this is the place where Tata's and Mahindra's and Birla's aren't there, but you are there. So you need to explain what does it mean? How do you fan out into the country in terms of technology, in terms of people? Technology is cheap. See, okay, a couple of things. It's a happy coincidence in that case. It, uh, this, all these new technologies it's have actually, arrived. To computing help. is cheaper than it used to be. IoT is easily available and cheaper than it used to be. Over the last 10 to 15 years, the governments in India have done a fantastic job of connectivity. There's a rural road to every village I go. There's a pakka road where you could do logistics. There is There are educational centers, colleges, polytechnics in the heartland. For example, I just came from the Central University of South Bihar. Huge campus. You know, you, the, the availability of manpower is there. Um, the nature of government has changed. For, in the sense, if you are a private sector entity and you access from a municipality to a panchayat, to a state government, to a central government, there is receptivity. That I need this. Can you do this for me? Rather than you cannot do this, you should not be doing this. Big change. But let's have some numbers out there. How many people do you have on the ground, captive or through contracts? How many machines or how many sensors do you have? Do you have any numbers you can share? I have about 7,500 sensors all across the country, which is mostly weather sensor. But now we've got uh, crop cameras, soil moisture, soil temperature, crop sensors. We've had a fleet of what used to be probably the biggest civilian fleet but we've had about 15 drones flying around this india collecting in, in this country 15 drones 15 drones for six seven years or do, you have, do they have skymet logo or something no, sounds very we, nice <laughs> <laughs> we go quietly and we collect the data uh -huh. and all this data is basically for directly or indirectly for government only um we are about uh, 348 people uh direct who are on the rolls of a company spread out across the country we are in delhi bombay jaipur uh, and pune uh, just the fixed offices, but we have a lot of field strength. Agriculture is terrestrial. Without manpower presence, it doesn't make sense. And uh, we have about some three, 4,000 people who collect data for us who are on temporary roles uh, if and when we So it's data. a bit like the National Sample Survey, you know, yeah, like yeah. the NSS with its own very uh, tentacles spreading across people. Uh, but the drones make it sound very interesting, of course, but uh, very cool. But so you have drones and you have sensors and you have people and you have a central command room that yeah, yeah we have a, a server. All the data comes in. We have engine. We manufacture. We, we do everything from manufacturing the sensor to forecasting the weather, to <laughs> to creating. You do manufacture. Yes, I have a I have a factory, small one in Pune, where we put together. We we are an AQI now, by the way. We have put up. We probably are the AQI correct. Uh, air quality. Oh oh yeah, we were coming to that separately. I mean. I think we are jumping the gun. Yeah, Let's, yeah. Uh, we'll come to the echo. There is so a, now we can. We are sitting in NCR. That those we, are the separate yeah. question. <laughs> we have okay. calibration, manufacturing. We have a very good team. We have a fantastic CEO, deputy CEO, software. We're pretty strong. You mentioned AQI. I, I thought that deserved a separate treatment since in Delhi the topic of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, you know, a conversation starter is usually uh, nice. You know, good that you and I are not wearing masks today, but... Not that we know if it actually works. There's no empirical <laughs> evidence to suggest that wearing a mask actually reduces it. There is none. Yeah, I think uh, you have this wonderful combination of a cynical journalist and this, uh, <laughs> a skeptical scientist. We will talk about it later. But, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about AQI. How do you get into this? Is it just that you load the same infrastructure with the sensors for air and then that becomes a new thing. More or the less, monsoon, yes. You know, people used to discuss monsoon rains in India, now they are discussing AQI. air pollution. Yes, uh -huh. I, basically, yes, we got into it. The more you build, the more you learn how to build other things. So if I can build a weather station, I can put and slap on an AQI sensor on top of it. I have a calibration system. I have engineers who understand that kind of data. Uh, then you can, if you can do that, then you can do soil moisture, soil temperature and mm -hmm. soil sensing. So it's the IoT ecosystem has become much easier. A lot of it is available online. China builds the core sensors very cheaply. You just need to have a sustained focus and you can start coming up. Now we are actually getting into some kind of consumer electronics. So we will be selling SkyMet branded handheld AQI sensors in a week's time. Mm -hmm. But if you have a handheld AQI sensor and you walk around with it, you will live very differently. It's like your GPS device. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Okay. And it's not that expensive. So for if, you, if you're in hotels or your students or colleges, so you get an instant AQI, how it, you know, so for example, if you shut all the windows, the AQI suddenly improves. 
Who are your customers now? I mean, let's talk a bit about your money. Uh, my customers are insurance companies, banks, governments. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have uh, aggregate companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, telecom companies also now, increasingly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then we have uh, we we have a, s a certain amount of revenue that trickles in through our website and apps, advertising, mm -hmm. and then media is still there. Do you have competitors? Yes, absolutely. We have competitors. IMD is a competitor. IMD has become good at its game. A lot of the data that was in, in storage. Technology is now being deployed. Mm -hmm. um, then we have uh, on the uh, there is IBM that is here, mm -hmm. uh, globally the, the weather company that is that is trying to get into the game. On the uh, crop side, we have had our traditional uh, um, companies like Weather Risk Management uh, Services, National Collateral Management Service. There's another uh, startup by the name of CropIn that is doing these things. So the, it, it is it is not uh, you know we are, we are not alone. It's a pretty steady business in that sense. Yeah. I think uh, we've been able to, as an entrepreneur, as my team has been able to ma make first steady cash flows. So I always believe that working with the government is like living with a bipolar spouse. You need to manage it. <laughs> Wonderful. Quote number two of the day. Yeah. And, you know, and the risk has to be diversified. And once you become a partner, they will go with you. It just takes a lot. Of anyway, thanks. It's been great talking to you, but I'm going to shoot a very personal question because I'm a journalist and you started out as one. Obviously, for somebody who digs a lot into technology and business, you still have the journalist articulation. You can't compare a government with a bipolar spouse. <laughs> You're a journalist of some kind. So what does it mean? Has being a journalist helped you in this business? I think that is for my customers and shareholders to say, who am I? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think it, it, I was taught how to write. Mm -hmm. And I was not a good writer. I learned how to write, I think. I think that has really helped me. I think articulation, mm -hmm. business people are not, you don't invest in learning how to write and, write and communicate. Write. I'm not even say talk, write. Mm -hmm. If you, I think if you invest in learning how to write, then you become more curious and you tend to communicate better. Well, talking to you has been quite interesting because it's, it's almost as if you were telling a story on how to revolutionize Indian agriculture with data, not to speak of other things. <laughs> of course, um, you're not yet a unicorn, are you? No, no. <laughs> no, no. Mind being one. Yeah. But it's a study company. It's a fascinating company. It's a great story. Lovely talking to Thank you, you. Jatin. Thank you. Nice meeting you. That was Jatin Singh and it was great talking to him about everything from uh, weather forecasts to insurance to farmers to scientists and the state of Indian babus. Thank you for watching.